You guys, where did you get these cute vegan shirts? I love them. I made it! <laughs> <laughs> so today we have the creator of a lot of the shirts that we wear on the show. She is a big proponent in activism apparel and our friend, <laughs> Taryn. <laughs> hey. So we've had a lot of people come up and ask me, tell me how much they love my shirts. <laughs> and I'm like, mm, that's not me. But yeah. then I direct them over to her booth. Yeah, actually one time at a vegan festival, my mom yeah. from like far away thought Misha was me. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I had longer hair. Yeah. Yeah. She used to have really long hair. Yeah. yeah. No, but honestly, Taryn, I love your shirts. I've been wearing them for a couple years mm -hmm. and I cannot tell you how many times people ask me, where'd you get that shirt? Where'd you get that shirt? Because mm -hmm. you have so many good puns and just vegan messages, but they're not like, you're bad if you don't eat yeah, vegan. Yeah. It's more like kind of adds levity and my favorite I think one of my favorites is the NASA one it's like supposed to be NASA but yeah. it says vegan yeah. so cute. that's it's one of so our cool. most asked about oh my shirts. god I love always that like, oh, they're mm -hmm. I think we both have one and then we have the same we just yeah, we have all the one. same shirts yeah. I get a ton of compliments on this one yeah. especially because it's very like I feel like vegan or not, you can relate to yeah. yeah. There's like multiple yeah. meanings. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. And also the lettuce eat plants is always funny. People mm -hmm. always read it and then they read it again. I'm I love like, those. Yeah. I feel yeah. like whoever wears like the shirt, like if you're in lettuce eat plants, like you get to take on like the cleverness of it. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, totally. It's a little cheeky. It makes you seem like very funny. Yeah. Punny. Yeah. 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 Very punny. And I, I wanted, I like did it so that I could have a funny way to like, right. humorous way to talk about veganism because like, I went vegan nine years ago, and I feel like at the time everyone was, you know, watching like horrible videos of yeah. slaughterhouses that no one really wants to talk about. No. So like, I was like, how do I talk about this in like a lighthearted, fun way? It yeah. starts conversations in a positive, yeah. happy yeah. way, right. like yeah. very warm and friendly. Instead of you're doing everything bad, watch this video. Yeah, yeah, because mm. that's not how the conversation should be. Mm -hmm. You know, like I want people to be on my team or on my side and see what I'm doing yeah. and and it to be like an approachable, attainable not lifestyle, right. not something that looks like so far-fetched that they can never get yeah. there, you yeah. know? Yeah. That's what we're yeah. all about. Yeah. 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 We don't want any shame around it. No. Yeah. It's very like warmth and levity yeah. to our activism. Yeah. So you went vegan nine years ago? Mm -hmm. That's amazing. I feel like that was before a lot of these you know, products have been on the market. I feel like yeah. there's been a wave of so many new things, but wow, nine years ago, how did that start? Can you tell us? Um. Yeah, sure. So basically, I was in college at ASU. I was a sophomore and I just got back from studying abroad in Barcelona. Amazing. It was awesome, except in Spain, they have meat, ham, yeah. pig yeah. thighs that like hang from the ceiling. Oh, from the and not house. once was I like, oh, look at that, dinner. Right. <laughs> like, that is disgusting. I yeah. don't want to eat that at all. So I was pretty much a vegetarian um, while I was abroad, came back to America. I was in college, ate like Taco Bell, Wendy's, in and out you know, all the college yeah. food stuff. Of course. And kept getting really sick. And I was like, what's happening? You know, I just want to like eat and enjoy mm -hmm. my food. But I think what happened was I had not eaten meat for a few months. Yeah. That when I came back to eating meat, my body, mm -hmm. um, it just didn't sit right. So I started doing some research. And as I did research and ed educated myself on like what is healthy and what isn't and then next thing I knew I was vegan every day mm -hmm. and I ended up curing myself of asthma and eczema so at that yeah. point I was like I, I don't think I'll ever eat yeah meat or dairy again and I've continued to learn about the animals and the environment and yeah I would say now I'm like an ethical vegan yeah you know I had a similar experience yeah. yeah when you were doing research was it stuff like online or did you read books or documentaries or yeah. how did you come about um, great question. I would say that one book I read that I really enjoyed, because again, they used humor to talk about everything, was Skinny Bitch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it that was, was a one of really first. good book. Yeah. And like, it was just so funny, but like also they were just so brutally honest mm -hmm. yeah. that it really helped me learn and understand. Reading their like section about slaughterhouses, I hadn't watched a video on slaughterhouses at the time, but reading what they had to say was enough for me to like, picture it in my mind and be like, wow, yeah. that's, I'm never gonna contribute to that, you know? That book, the way it's written, it's very humorous, and then all of a sudden it like morphs into talking about the animals, and it just hits you. Yeah. <laughs> like that sounded. <laughs> <laughs> but what's really funny about that book is it starts off like talking about soda, and it makes 
it makes eating unhealthy very uncool and the way they talk to you mm -hmm. you want to be their friend mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden they switch and they start talking about like animal rights and the slaughterhouses and it just hits you because you you're kind of like bonding on as board you, yeah. Uh, yeah and and also they like they interview people that worked in slaughterhouses yeah. so oh. you're like oh you're hearing from people firsthand wow. that like experience this they don't hold back at all yeah and what I've, what they describe did so. they mention like that it was traumatic for them at all. I'm always so curious about the people that Yeah, they that did. Do they did actually. There was a the whole book. Yeah. yeah, there's you can at the end of the chapter it says like you can read a whole book on slaughterhouse workers and like how they have like depression and mm. Lots like of PTSD issues. type of issues for from sure. like seeing death all day long, you yeah, know? That's like yeah. what's going on. Yeah. So that book was really good and also at the time like Forks Over Knives was like just mm -hmm. coming out and like getting really popular. And on Netflix, I remember like seeing like a premiere of it in the theater, um, and yeah. So those were the things I think that really like catapulted my veganism and helped me understand and learn and yeah, start to. I need to read myself. that book. I've seen it and I flipped through it, but now I really want to read it. Oh, it's, it's really, really good. good. It is really good, and I do really appreciate how they like present the information. Yeah, they do a great job. Yeah, it's funny too. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. Like, you'll laugh. Yeah, and you'll the laugh. Yeah, yeah. I, I've reread it since then because mm -hmm. it was so good. Yeah. So and I didn't know that Skinny Bitch was a vegan book. Me either. I, thought, yeah, I was, I was like, I wonder if it's Skinny Bitch. Because it's not promoted that way at all. <laughs> no. 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 Yeah. When I was flipping through it, I remember it was, I don't even think there was a vegan section at the time, but it was in like the diet and health mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. section. And I just remember reading it like that. So now I definitely want to go back. It reminds me what you were saying. It reminds me of the John Lennon quote where he said, if slaughterhouses had glass walls, the whole world would be vegan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah it's so hard quote. once you know that to go back and see it as anything but that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like those words that I read and like what I pictured in my mind, like those images are forever yeah. ingrained in my same. head now. Right. So yeah, same. I just like, I don't look at animals as food anymore. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. it's just, they. I'd rather starve. Yeah, <laughs> you know. I mean, yeah. Jesse and I were sitting on our couch and we're looking at our little skinny. We just adopted a dog and he's like this little skinny string bean. And you look at their legs and it looks like a chicken thigh. And he was like, "How could anyone eat a yeah. chicken's leg? Like after having a dog, like it's it looks it's like a living being." Yeah. yeah, and you're like, "That's a leg." Mm -hmm. Now I look at it and I see a leg. Yeah, I feel like it's just weird. What was the transition like for you? Because yeah. there weren't that many options back then. Um, honestly, it was kind of difficult because I was in college. I remember like being drunk with my friends and everyone yep. or eating cheese pizza and be like, yeah. come on, just have a slice. And I'm like, no, I don't want it. I don't eat it anymore. They're like, you ate it your whole life. Yeah. Why aren't you eating yeah. it now? That's one slice. Yeah, like, like it's yeah. not going to kill yeah. you. Just come fit in with us. Yeah. Like. yeah. So like, I think like society actually and my friends made it difficult. I think I learned who my real friends were and who my yeah. <laughs> real friends are were not, yeah. you know, just because the ones that didn't really care what I ate but still wanted to be my friend, like, mm -hmm. those are your friends. And the ones yeah. that, like, wanted to judge me or, like, exactly. for what I was eating, like, They're looking for stuff to pick apart. Yeah. And, like, what else are they going to pick apart yeah. later on if it's something that's so meaningfully full to you? Like, yeah, that's not, yeah. Yeah. That's exactly. not nice. Yeah. But it takes a lot of gumption to say no and to go against, like, things your friends do. Oh yeah, God, especially at that age. Yeah. Like, and in college. Yeah, in college, I feel yeah. like all I wanted to do was, like, fit in and blend in and be, be like, normal. Especially because yeah. I didn't, I was always, like, kind of an outsider growing Same, up. So when yeah. I got to college, I was just like, I want to be like everybody else. Yeah. yeah. So no. I commend you for that. That's amazing. Thank you. No, I think, you know, like I said, I learned who my real friends were. And yeah. the ones that really did support me anytime we went out to eat, like, they were always down to go to, like, try a vegan spot with me or, like, share a vegan meal with me. And I really appreciated that because yeah. I think I needed that at that time, especially because yeah. I didn't know any other vegans. Yeah. And that made it really hard. Mm -hmm. I literally moved from Arizona back to L.A. so that I could, like, find vegan friends wow <laughs> like it was like a spur of the moment decision I was like okay I'm like sick of living in Arizona where there's like no vegan a lot of our viewers especially on our Facebook page will say like I'm the only vegan I know mm -hmm. and I'm so glad that we have this online community because yeah, it can so feel important. really strange to be the only one and you know why you're vegan you know why it's important but the outside yeah. world can minimize that yeah lot. and I think it's especially hard when like the people you love, your friends and family, and you want them to understand why why you're making mm -hmm. these decisions, and then you can't 
you you can't figure out the right words or how to express yeah. it to yeah. them. Articulate it. Yeah, so you're in this situation where you're like, you feel so lonely, like no one understands you or like what you're going through. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was a, a big deal for me to move back to LA, but I ultimately did it to find friends yeah. and, and vegan fat kid, Tim, yeah. was like on Instagram having like come eat with me, I'll buy you a pizza a week. Oh, it was like vegan fat kid pizza fun. week. That's so I like so cute. brought a friend for backup in case he was like a creepy guy from the <laughs> internet. <laughs> and like Good. we went and met him at like 800 degrees Amazing. and like had vegan oh pizza. And like that was like what so started nice. like me making vegan friends off That's the internet. <laughs> so how did that turn into vegetarian? Like when did you um, start thinking I need to do something with it? So I, when I moved back, I like knew at that time that I wanted to start my own business and I knew I wanted to do something that would promote a vegan lifestyle in like a funny way. So I had no money and I was so broke because <laughs> I just got out of college, you yeah, know? Yeah, totally. And um, I, I was researching like, what can I buy and sell? Yeah. So I was like, okay, t-shirts. Like I could do that. I can afford like about a hundred shirts. We'll go to like a festival in Arizona. I like called the festival and I was like, I just graduated ASU. I can't afford a booth. Like, can you give me a deal? Yeah. Oh my God, amazing. Like, I'm like, <laughs> gotta get in sending there. them screenshots of my website that I'm currently building on. Like, this is what it will look like. <laughs> <laughs> no joke. That. No joke. And I'm like, can I be a part of your festival? And they're like, yeah, sure. They like, let me do it for 50% off. I've done their festival now every year for the past five years. That's so nice. It was a vegan festival? It was a vegan festival in Arizona, the AZ Veg Food Fest. Amazing. And uh, yeah, and then I did that and that I sold the shirts that I bought. And then I was like, okay, I gotta find a new festival. It you came sold like all of them, not all of them, okay. but like enough, enough to, to make buy more stock. a profit yeah. and buy more shirts That's to awesome. like continue on. So I like was like, okay, there's got to be a vegan festival in LA. Like come yeah. back, and I I see that Vegan Street Fair was their first ever year. Yeah, and I hit them up. I'm like, I, I need know. a deal. Yeah. <laughs> literally Such all. A business That's moment. what I did I from the beginning, and that that was five years ago. That's and I nice. keep keep doing that. What was your major? <laughs> Communications. Oh, nice. I had a minor in family and human development, and I did get a certificate in plant-based nutrition from Cornell's like online yeah, school. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. You're, you're so, I feel, naturally business-minded, because it takes a lot. I, I think you just have a very strong sense of self, because putting yourself out there again with like your friends yeah. in college and being like, hey, I'm vegan. I don't care if you guys are. Exactly. And then to ask like, for a deal, so many people, I think, want to start their own business, but they're afraid to ask because mm -hmm. they're afraid of the rejection. But, mm -hmm. like, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah. yeah, you know, I think I had really great friends in college. And even when I was in middle school, I, like, sold bracelets, you know? Like, yes. I was, like, it's just, like, in me. I've never had, like, yeah. a real corporate job. I, like, babysat or, like, coach cheer. Like, mm -hmm. when I needed to make money, I, like, found, found a way. A way. Yeah. yeah. So... I guess um, I did the same with my businesses. Be, yeah. and, like I just knew that I needed to start and like these were like larger companies. I'm like, they can help me. Like, yeah. you know, I can help them with like my 2000 followers at the time. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm just gonna like tell them I'll promote their event and stuff. And yeah. yeah. It, it worked, you know? I love that. Amazing. And I also love that you sent them screenshots of a website <laughs> that wasn't fully yeah. done. Oh my God, it's so ugly too, guys. I'm sure, but <laughs> I mean, so many people, yeah. you're probably gonna say the same well, thing. Well, no, cause I was just having a conversation with someone recently about how it's never gonna be perfect. Mm -hmm. You just have to get started. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't wait until it's perfect to start mm -hmm. because then you're gonna have, it just wastes time and yeah. nothing you're oh, even when you do start that's not how it's going to be right. you're yeah. always going to evolve yeah. Yeah. and in writing there's a saying i've heard where nothing is ever finished it's just turned in mm -hmm. and yeah. i feel like business is a similar way where yeah, you that just is kind so of true yeah what was your first shirt and do you still sell it now yeah my first shirt was let us eat plants amazing and also and it looks like one of your kale. best ones yeah it was the two together that's awesome um, except if looks could kale wasn't that design it was, it was different so was ugly i can probably send you guys a photo to like put up on the screen it's so embarrassing for me because it's please so do. bad. No, please do because that's so the bad. point. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think that I your bought, first oh, thing is always going to be bad. It's like black. I, I bought, yeah, it was a black. Like, <laughs> I bought the lettuce. So I, I was being, I think it was like five years ago, and I was going for Christmas, and because Taryn's shirts are so friendly and they're not like, go vegan or die, like, yeah. you know? I mean, sometimes I like those shirts, but <laughs> when you're the only vegan in yeah. your family, yeah. I wanted to give those people, like, my, a those subtle, people, my subtle family, little hint. I wanted to give them something because, like, going vegan meant so much to me, it, like, cured me of my illness, and I just love animals, so I wanted them to get a taste of that, and I found her shirts on Etsy, yeah, and I bought so those, like, old designs and I think my mom dad and brother still have them oh my god I love so that nice. but yeah it was just like it, 
I the st- <laughs> it stood out to me so much because it was one of the few vegan brands that didn't take itself so seriously and was friendly and approachable. I, yeah. I'm so glad to hear that because mm-hmm. even today, like, you know, when you're always around other vegans, it's really it's hard to put yourself in a situation where you you realize that not everyone else isn't vegan or yeah. doesn't think that way. So mm-hmm. like I recently went to Nashville and actually I was expecting to go there and be like find nothing vegan to eat. Yeah. Actually it was crazy. Times have changed. Like there was I went to multiple vegan restaurants. Really? There, which is crazy in Tennessee, you know, in Memphis too. Oh, but that was um, really good food. There. It was really good, honestly. It was great. <laughs> but yeah, you know, like the rest of the world, it's hard to remember and I think that like even if people eat one vegan meal or mm-hmm. two vegan meals or one a year, whatever it is, like I really don't care. I'd rather like show it's them weird. that I'm like thriving in this lifestyle. Yeah. That like they can come ask me questions. That if someone tells me like, oh, I'm not vegan anymore, like I'm not gonna jump down their throat no. because you know what? I want them back on my team eventually. So like we're gonna stay friends. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna show them like you you actually can get through this and, yeah. and stay vegan and be healthy. Like, I'm living proof, actually. Yeah. I was on and off vegan for years yeah. before, I, or plant-based, because you're not really vegan. But <laughs> <laughs> I was on and off plant-based for years before I went vegan, mm-hmm. and now I, like, I it's just so easy to me, but I had to just get through it. Yeah. And then I had wonderful people on the internet supporting me. I didn't know vegans in real life. And it's just that's so important yeah. Yeah. to be attracting people rather than pushing them away and shaming them yeah. right, right right nobody wants to feel shame no one wants yeah. to feel like they're doing something bad yeah, yeah. so yeah I think that's such a great mentality to yeah. have just and like be warm open arms one mm-hmm. of the shirts I made was more compassion please and I was motivated <laughs> to make that shirt not for the rest of society mostly for, for the vegan yes. yeah. because I was like so annoyed that everyone's like oh i'm so vegan i'm so vegan like i would never eat an animal (laughs) i'm like so nice to all the animals but i'm I'm so mean to other humans that eat meat yeah Yeah. like that doesn't make sense and nothing about that is compassionate so like if you truly are vegan in my opinion then you are kind to those that don't eat yeah vegan you know yeah yeah like, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, because we're all animals. What we're fighting mm-hmm. for with the animals is we want them to be treated well. Mm-hmm. We, want it th- we want them to be treated as good as we treat our fellow humans. Mm-hmm. So we have to do that with our fellow yeah. human animals yeah. as That's well. That's why on our show we always try to have, like, even if they're not vegan, if they're making steps toward a plant-based lifestyle, like, we want to talk to them. They could they know different things when you put yourself in that vegan bubble. Because that helps. And it helps you be a more effective activist as well mm-hmm. because Rodney. sometimes you're in an echo chamber and we're, we mm-hmm. all are very much on the same page and yeah. we feel like everyone gets it. And when someone doesn't get it, it can be very jarring and you feel like, well... And I've heard so many people say it feels like, well, what's wrong with them? And then, and then you know, you, you kind of treat them as if there's something wrong with them, forgetting that you were once there as well yeah. and saw things in that way. And you were a compassionate person then, and you were a good person then. You just didn't see things in the way that we do. And it can be really polarizing sometimes. Yeah. It, what you're saying reminds me of um, a Colleen Patrick Goudreau um, podcast where she said that the goal is not to be a perfect vegan. The goal is not veganism. The goal is compassion mm-hmm. and to live as compassionately as you can. And I'm doing this because what yeah. I'm about to say is yeah. that she said that veganism is the road that you take to get there, but it's not necessarily the end goal. And having that you know, switch of perspective and realizing mm-hmm. that you are trying to be a more compassionate whole person overall, not a perfect vegan, that's that's a thing that I think is missing yeah. in the community. Yeah, there's no such thing as a perfect vegan because like when I get in my car and I drive, mm-hmm. I hit bugs, they die. Yeah. Um, yeah. It happens, yeah. <laughs> you know, like I yeah. step on the ground, there's ants, like, you know. You build your house. Yeah. Like, or like, you live in an apartment yeah, that like, has like there things is living no, underneath it. Exactly. They have to uproot them. Exactly. Like, it's, it's just... Or a lot of people will say, oh, if you like organic food, then they're killing all of the other animals that are involved in the farming process. They can't have, (laughs) and it's like all the bugs and all the, there's like, you can't have squirrels like eating, you know. But that that little stuff isn't, it's funny because it's, we start thinking about the kind of, um, the ethos of it and the kind of dogma of it over what's the point. Yeah. We're trying to eliminate as much suffering as possible in these slaughterhouses and grand scale manufacturing of animal flesh and secretions is just like it's horrible yeah. for the planet the yeah. animals for the people who work there and so when if you're worried so much about the bugs you're stepping on you're totally forgetting the large amount the of living things that are dying yeah. yeah yeah actually there was like the most hypocritical thing i read the other day some man he 
is on trial because he killed a pig that ran away for slaughter. <laughs> so wait, he's what? like on trial for like animal what? abuse. Oh wait, what? wait, yeah, wait, the, I need a the pig ran away from slaughter, <laughs> like off a truck, or like it was a so sorry, he's just getting charges. He didn't like run away from dog. slaughter. I made him. I made a mistake. The, it was a pet pig that ran away from someone's house, oh. and he killed the pig. So it's like animal abuse, right? Yeah. Like he killed the pig. He that's what he's on trial for. Yep, it's a pet. But yeah, we kill billions mm-hmm. or millions the, uh-huh. sorry, of pigs. Wow. Uh huh. Wow. That is so crazy. And I've always thought that was so interesting that people can go to jail for beating a dog, mm-hmm. but yet we are abusing animals mm-hmm. and killing animals every single day. Like in billions. Like quantities. Billions. Yeah. And it, in savage, disgusting and I mean, ways. They're held, their whole lives they're are held, held down in, oh. in disgusting conditions. And, and it's that's just not animal abuse. Like in Yulin, which is actually coming up. Yulin, they killed hundreds and thousands of dogs. Yeah. And we get so upset over here. And I know people who like sob and cry, but they still eat animals who yeah. are slaughtered just the way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I feel like meat eaters have to see the hypocrisy they, in that. You have or, to like, see the footage, I think, for yourself, though, because mm-hmm. I thought when I would see those PETA videos before yeah, I was vegan that, that it was, was isolated. Humane. But I thought it was, I, I thought those really bad ones were isolated incidents. And that they were, you know, from really corrupt farmers who mm-hmm. were being really bad, but the majority couldn't possibly be that way. We, we, we wouldn't let it be that way. Mm-hmm. And I've seen footage inside yeah. of, you know, the humane slaughterhouses. And I was telling my mom, because I saw it recently on Instagram, there, and I think it's important that people know there's these mother pigs who are literally oh, yeah. in a cage where they're laying down and they're in a cage where they can't stand up. Yeah. And it's because they don't want to crush the babies. Mm-hmm. And so that pig who has who is as smart, if not smarter than a dog, is literally just laying there, can't move, and that's considered humane. Yeah. It's, it's you can't unsee that, you know, yeah. and it's really hard. How is it that he's on trial for animal abuse when literally we kill so many other yeah. animals? Yeah. It's crazy. It's that's awful. It's, just the lucky pets, you know? Yeah. That's sad. Yeah. It always makes me so happy, though, to hear of the animals that actually do escape the trucks, you yeah. know? And they're yeah. like, you're just like, yes, you made it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. my God. So I'm like, you're a real trooper. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. It's cr- just so crazy that we don't show, nobody really knows what goes on, except for vegans who are willing to do the research or watch the documentaries. But, like, your average everyday person has never seen a slaughterhouse video and doesn't actually know what goes on because they don't tell us. They are so good with their marketing terms. And, like, one of the first things that people say when I tell them I'm vegan is, like, oh, you know, I really don't eat meat that much. But when I do, I make sure that it's humane, it's grass-fed, it's organic, like, blah, blah. And I'm, like, those mean nothing to Mm -hmm. me. Those are marketing terms. That's what they put on the package to make you feel a little less guilty about what you buy. But But it's still the same end result. It's so easy for us to see other and to think that we're doing the best we can because in our own lives, we're only seeing our own perspective and it's like we're the hero of our own life. So Mm -hmm. why would you think, oh, I'm the one who's contributing to killing? Like there comes a day when you sit down and you're like, something had to die for this. Mm -hmm. And I feel like for me, every time I saw meat, that was when I switched. I was like, oh, I don't need this to live, but someone needs me to not eat it to live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. And also I feel like every time I eat, like my choices have a much greater impact, not just for myself, but mm-hmm. like for the animals that are surviving, but also the environment. Mm-hmm. So it's like you you have three times typically you eat a day, and like each time I eat, I'm doing something that's like for the greater good than oh, just yeah. for like my own selfish reasons. And it's so like empowering. Yeah. yeah, it's such a passive way yeah. to be an activist. An activist so yeah. easy. Yeah. It's pretty Absolutely. easy. <laughs> like, I mean, I used to be in college and I would eat food from CVS that was underneath my apartment. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I mean, I'm a little more upscale now. <laughs> but I could do it then. It was so easy to me, but it was because I had made that mental shift. Mm-hmm. Whereas if I, before when I was flip-flopping back and forth, I really felt like, like I was like, oh, I need this meat for iron. Like, mm-hmm. I'm doing really good for my body. Like, thank you, animal, for dying, but I need this more than you need to live. But now I've made that shift, and it's like, oh, I really am fine. Doing yeah. pretty good. Mm-hmm. Still pretty cute. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Very cute. Always pretty cute. <laughs> um, I would love to know the best thing about owning a vegan business and the most challenging thing about owning a vegan business. Mm-hmm. Um, the best thing about owning a vegan business would definitely be when... I see people wearing my shirts 
enjoying my shirts or people tell me like they love my shirts so much it just makes me so excited or like that someone had a conversation because Mm. of the shirt because I'm then I'm like wow it that's that's what it was meant to do you know like it was meant to create conversation so that like you're out in public or maybe you're at the grocery store and someone sees your shirt and they're like oh your shirt's funny it happens all the time yeah and usually my response is like oh thanks like I really like my fruits and veggies. You know, yeah. I don't even like automatically say I'm vegan. And then they ask me like, oh, are you vegan? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh, how is that? You know, and it, it, and it starts naturally like, the starts the, con- right. You know, <laughs> that's and it, smart that you don't say, oh, I'm vegan right off the bat because that can like switch off their brains. Yeah. But everybody and likes, or I mean, that's a lot such of a stereotype. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I literally don't say it anymore because I'm like this person, if I say I'm vegan, they're going to judge me. That's yeah. Really I smart. never say it. I wait for people to ask me. Yeah. 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 It's a way better because then they're approaching you and they might be interested you know mm-hmm. and like they feel like you weren't pushing them to like tell them what to eat or anything yeah mm, that's really smart yeah. yeah and also even if they don't say anything I know that people read the shirt and it plants little seeds yeah absolutely and then they're sure. seeing more and more vegan stuff and all of a sudden it's like that they connect the dots yeah you know point. you see all the subliminal messages that you randomly get throughout the years like I didn't go vegan overnight it took me probably six months so I think you know over that six months I probably saw like more vegan options mm-hmm. on the menu. You start noticing. Or, yeah, you know, it's like that. There's some theory where like you you get get a yellow bug and then suddenly you see a yellow bug everywhere. Yep. You yeah, know? Mm-hmm. totally. <laughs> so yeah, I just it's that's definitely one of the best things about owning a ve- vegan business. And then for challenge, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like we probably have a lot of similar challenges. I don't know. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of challenges. I would say. Um, just using the right um, voice when talking about veganism so that I am approachable and that people feel like they can come to my website or my Mm -hmm. Instagram and feel like, you know, they can ask me questions or, like, actually gain knowledge from it or, like, Mm -hmm. take something away with with it. So I think, like, you know, it, it is a challenge every day to put yourself out there and always try to put yourself out there where you're like giving something to your audience that they can actually take away. Yeah. 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 I really like too that your clothing is ethically made and Mm -hmm. that it's kind of more slow fashion versus the fast fashion Mm -hmm. that's so popular now. Was that difficult for you when you, I mean, I'm sure there was a part of you that wanted that, but when you, when you have to compete against fast fashion and like $7 t-shirts, was Mm -hmm. that something that was challenging? Yeah. Um, you know, from the beginning, I always knew that, like, if I was going to have a shirt that was, like, promoting a vegan lifestyle, you know, there's no way I could have shirts that were made in a sweatshop. So yeah. they've always been ethically made and sweatshop free and fair trade and all that good stuff. They're hand printed right mm-hmm. here in L.A. And I would say that, no, it hasn't been that hard. I think that the vegan community is, you know, I tried to price the shirts from the beginning at a reasonable price point I did struggle more I will say when I came out with an organic line Mm -hmm. because those are expensive yeah and like to be honest like most organic shirts are in like the 60 to 80 dollar price range I had mine priced at 38 dollars and still people didn't buy them yeah like they were too expensive so I had to take that line like discontinue it and that was a bummer for me it was something I tried Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, there wasn't like the market wasn't ready for it, and yeah, um, you know it does it does really offend me when people are so rude and they're like, "How come your shirts aren't organic?" Or like, <laughs> what, "Why you this buy is it. terrible? You're not a real vegan," yeah. you know? Oh, and it's no. like things well, there's like always because I know we struggle with it too. Like, it's so hard to judge. Will people want this? Will mm-hmm. people buy it? Will people know the value of it if you put in that work? Yeah, and sometimes you have to wait it out and do better like do the best you can until you can do better and Charlie was talking about that on his episode Charlie Mm -hmm. the brownie guy Um, he switched over to Mm eco-plastic and he was like we couldn't do it before but now there's a market for it and people are willing to buy it and we have a manufacturer that will do it yeah yeah you know I think I was a little bit too premature Mm -hmm. in coming out their organic fashion I think that a lot of vegans in the community are hyper focused on their food choices which Mm -hmm. is wonderful and we absolutely need it but you know veganism extends past our food choices it goes to your clothing your cleaning products your household items Mm -hmm. your bedding you know like I think year five into my veganism I was like laying in bed one day and I'm like this is a down pillow what am I doing you know like I need to get 
get rid of this. Like, I'm donating it. Need to go get one that's, like, I got one that's made from bamboo. Like, I'm like, it's vegan. It's so nice. So, yeah, you know, like, you take steps to get there. Yeah, yeah, like I said, I didn't go vegan overnight. And I can't ever expect anyone else to. That's why, like, if you're vegan or you claim to be vegan and you're in Ugg boots, I'm not going to even judge that because I didn't throw my Ugg boots out right away. And I was telling people I was vegan. We're all on separate journeys. Like, no one's going to be at the same pace as you are staying in your life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, There's like no judgment necessary. And if the it's message so of going vegan is that you have to change every single part of your life overnight, first of all, that's a huge expense. It's really exhausting. Mm-hmm. It seems so overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Like that's not mm-hmm. attractive to anybody. Everyone can say, yeah, I can eat more vegetables or I could try to replace a veggie burger, you know, now and again. Mm-hmm. But if you're like, you can't use any of the shoes you have now, you have to change everything, <laughs> get rid yeah. of all your pillows. That's exhausting. Yeah. yeah. Like, literally, I think it took me, like, seven years to fully get to right. where, like, all of my shoes, all of my purses, yeah. my wallets, all of my shampoo and conditioner. And also, like, I didn't learn all of those things yeah. overnight. It was along the way that I was like, wait, you're telling me shampoo can have animals in it? Yeah. How does that work? Yeah. <laughs> you know? like It's so hard. Or, like, wait, they put gelatin in the kids candy like yeah. why are they giving the kids poison basically yeah. that's so yeah. fucked up it's, are you allowed to say crazy. that on here yeah, sorry yeah, say whatever you, you want you say whatever you want <laughs> <laughs> it's actually though so messed up yeah. even the other day like um my boyfriend and i were looking for like some over-the-counter like cough medicine and oh every gosh. single one had high fructose corn syrup in it yeah. and i was like okay so like it's a known thing like vegan or not high fructose corn syrup is really bad for you right mm-hmm. yeah but then okay you're sick Here's some medicine. Have some high fructose corn syrup. Exactly. What's wrong like, with this why, picture? Why? Like, how does that work? Why? Like, or red dye. There's so much red yeah. dye yeah. in medication. And, like, my um, sister-in-law is allergic to red dye. So she's, like, never been able to find medication. She, and it's just, like, why? You're already sick. And this stuff is already um, proven to cause cancer, be profitable cause of, like, all these other diseases. But yeah. Here's, here's a little yeah it's here's some medicine ridiculous yeah I've never met anybody that was like oh yeah I went vegan and then the next day I was perfectly vegan I had all <laughs> cruelty free products I threw out all of my leather stuff like yeah blah, blah, blah. like if you did that congrats like yeah. good for you you're an anomaly because that's not normal that's expensive <laughs> yeah who are you <laughs> potentially wasteful can you tell yeah. me how to make that kind of money that I can throw away all my clothes it's like we have to give ourselves the grace. Yeah. Like give everybody around you the same grace that you would have liked to have yourself. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming. This oh, is really awesome. You. I'm so glad we finally made this happen. Guys. I, I thank know. Thank you for having me on You've the show. You've been wearing your shirts on the show since we started, and yeah. literally yeah. always get Every comments time. about it. So it's so good to finally have you. Oh well, you know what? Then I feel like we should make a, a discount code for all your people. Oh my god. I think we should. The reason we love her. Yeah. Okay. So we'll do. We'll do like. 25% off and I'll make the discount code like the vegan view or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll yeah. put the code right here. Yeah. So, and we'll put it in the description box yeah. as well yes. with the link. And I'll, I'll add it to my thing and I'll send you guys you. whatever photos you need to like cool. pop up on the show. Thank oh, you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so again. Much. All right. So that is going to be it for today's episode. Make sure you guys follow Taryn. Make yeah. sure you get some cute swag off her site. And um, yeah, we'll leave all of her information in the description box down below. If you're ever at a vegan festival, go say hi to her. Yeah, She's please do. Pretty nice. much almost always there. <laughs> and her booth is always popping. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And uh, make sure you join our Facebook group. Follow our individual channels. And we will see you guys next week for another episode. Bye. Bye. Guys, where'd you get these vegan shirts? They're so cute. That would be you. (laughs) (laughs) I had to come up and say I made it. My bad. Sorry. All right. Go again.